Let's turn today to the letter of Jude and verse 11. Jude is speaking about those people who had crept in unnoticed into the church. Verse 4. Particularly about those who have tried to bring into the church a corruption in the doctrine. Leading people away from that true faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. He's speaking particularly about those who minister the word, those who lead in the churches. He says, Woe to them! They have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the error of Balaam, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. There are three Old Testament characters mentioned here in this verse. And it's good for us to understand what he's trying to say about each of them as a warning for people in this day. First of all, the way of Cain. It's said about Cain in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12 that Cain was of the evil one. He belonged to the devil, it says, and slew his brother. And why did he slay him? Because Cain's own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. And that brought up a jealousy in him. It's a jealousy that began from the beginning of human history in the days of Cain and Abel and continued through all these 6,000 years of human history right until today. The jealousy of those who live in sin against people like Abel whose deeds are righteous. It says very clearly in that verse in 1 John 3, Abel's deeds were righteous. He lived a righteous life according to the light he had. Cain, his deeds were evil. And there was this jealousy, this trying to drag your brother whose deeds are righteous down to your level. It may not be with a stone that we kill our brother today like Cain killed Abel. It may be with words with a tongue, with a backbiting tongue, with gossip, slander, all because you're jealous that your brother is more righteous than you. Your brother has got victory over sin. You're defeated by sin. And therefore you invent a doctrine to comfort yourself in your spiritual defeat and call it the gospel of the grace of God. You have gone the way of Cain. You are jealous of what God has done in your brother, just like Cain was jealous of Abel. And that's what he says here. They have gone the way of Cain, jealous that God's approval has rested on another brother. And perhaps he's younger to you. That makes it worse. Abel was younger and Cain just couldn't stand it when God's approval rested on someone younger to him. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. If we have the fear of God, we shall see that we have the same flesh that Cain had. And we shall live in fear, lest we go that way ourselves. When you see God blessing another, leading another to a higher level of life than you yourself have experienced, rejoice with him. Humble yourself, follow his example, and seek for that life yourself, instead of trying to tear him down, and instead of trying to call him a heretic and pull him down in some way, then you will be going the way of Cain. Secondly, it says, they've, for pay, they've rushed headlong into the error of Balaam. Balaam was the man who was willing to preach any doctrine, provided he got money. God told him not to go to curse the Israelites when Balak, the king of Moab, called him. You read about that in the book of Numbers. And the first time, Balaam was willing to tell Balak's servants, I'm not coming. But the second time, when the king said, I will give you more money, and I will give you more honor, then Balaam sought God's will again. And there we learn a lesson, that when God sees that a man is eager to go along a particular way, God lets him go, even to his destruction. Balaam was finally destroyed. There was a time when Balaam was in touch with God. Finally, he became a soothsayer, we read in the book of Joshua, in touch with the devil. That's what can happen. When, why did he go that way? He 
wanted money. And there are people who will preach any doctrine if somebody will pay them. They have rushed headlong into the error of Balaam. Here is a second category of people we are warned against. Beware of being influenced by money in the doctrine you believe. Stand for the truth, even if it makes you poor financially. Otherwise, you will certainly be a follower of Balaam. And the interesting thing is you can think that God is with you. That's what Balaam thought. But he had gone astray completely. And thirdly, it says they have perished in the rebellion of Korah. Korah was the man who stood against Moses. He wanted the ministry that Moses had. He, along with some others, you read in Numbers 16, said to Moses, We are also servants of God. We are also just like you. You think God's spoken only to you? He's spoken to us too. An unwillingness to submit to authority that God had placed over them. God had seen the faithfulness of Moses through many years and placed him as an authority over them and Korah was unwilling to accept that authority. Be careful that you don't find yourself in that condition. The way of Cain, the error of Balaam and the rebellion of Korah. We find plenty of such examples today. He says, such men, verse 12, are those who are hidden reefs in your love feast. These are the people who will make a shipwreck of your church. Hidden reefs means the hidden rocks, which you can't see on the surface, which a ship goes and collides again and the ship is wrecked. These are the hidden reefs. Be careful. You remember when Paul was leaving the church in Ephesus, he called the elders together in Acts chapter 20. He said, as long as I was with you, these men who are seeking to lead people after themselves did not have power. But after my departure, he says, these ravenous wolves will come into the midst of the flock and draw away to the disciples after them. How is it that these people did not get power as long as Paul was there? Because he radically spoke the word of God that such people never got power in that church. But we find that when Paul left, the others were not so radical. And later on you find in Revelation chapter 2, the church in Ephesus has descended to such a low state, just like Paul predicted. These men are the people who will make a shipwreck of your church. They are hidden reefs in your love feast. They sit in your love feasts, feasting with you without any fear. They have no scruples. Without any fear, it says they care only for themselves. They look after none but themselves. Shepherds who feed only themselves. Shepherds who are interested not in feeding the flock, but in feeding themselves. We are warned about such shepherds. And dear friends, Christianity today abounds with such shepherds who are seeking to feed only themselves. Do you have a shepherd who is only interested in feeding himself? He can never lead you to a godly life because he doesn't have the spirit of Christ. Christ didn't come seeking his own. No, these people care for themselves, feed themselves. They are clouds without water deceptive. You see a black cloud in the sky and you think it's going to rain. It comes over and just passes over. You don't get any rain at all. Hollow. They don't bless you. There's no blessing of the Spirit in their ministry. Carried about by the winds. Every wind of doctrine. Pushed this way, that way. Autumn trees without fruit. Doubly dead. Uprooted. The Spirit of God tries to use every type of Example to illustrate the emptiness, hollowness, fruitlessness and deception of such people who seek to make shipwreck of a church by perverting the grace of God into licentiousness. Wild waves of the sea casting up their own shame like foam. Wandering stars. That means stars that once started out on the right course but have missed the course and they've gone away from the track that God has marked out for them. When you look up into the skies, you find that the stars keep the course that God has marked out for them. You read of shooting stars. These are the ones that have wandered out of course. Meteorites that have left 
the track God has appointed for them. He says there are people like that in Christendom. Wandering stars which don't follow any orbit, go outside the boundary God's appointed for them. To such people, the only thing that's reserved, Jude says, is the black darkness of eternity. Forever doomed to utter darkness. Many people think that when we speak about the gospel, we have to be so gentle and so gracious and so diplomatic. Well, Jude was not very diplomatic when he said that people were like wandering stars for whom the black darkness of eternity had been reserved. He wasn't diplomatic when he said that they were clouds without water and all the other horrible expressions he uses here because he earnestly contended for the faith. And he's telling the other believers, fight for it, brothers and sisters. Fight for this true faith that has been deliver delivered to us. And this is the calling that comes down to us now after 20 centuries. Fight for that true faith that has been delivered to the saints.